I want to talk about the, um, the factor theorem and the remainder theorem in one shot because they go hand in hand. Um, first of all, let's uh, discuss what a factor is. So let's talk about the number eight. I know that eight is, uh, oh, sorry. I know that eight, when divided by four, right, will give me the number two with no remainder, zero remainder, right? That means that four and two are factors of eight, right? They're numbers that can be multiplied to give me eight. Or I can divide eight by each of these without a remainder happening, right? Eight divided by two is four with no remainder. So a factor is something that um, goes into a number without a remainder. If I go 8 divided by 3, I'm going to get a remainder, which means that 3 is not a factor of 8. Okay, so make it simple first, kind of go through, you know, the stuff that you uh, learned back in the day. So that's what a factor is. Now, let me take it into um, quadratics, because everybody remembers, you know, basic FOIL and things like this. If I go and FOIL this out, first, outer, inner, last, and I'm going to do it fast, because that's not what this video is about. This is my trinomial. Well... Notice that if I take x plus 2 and I multiply it by x minus 3, I get the trinomial x squared minus x minus 6. That means that x plus 2 and x minus 3 are factors of x squared minus x minus 6. That means if I go and divide, and I'm going to actually do this real quick. If I divide x squared minus x minus 6 by let's say x plus 2 I'm gonna do synthetic real fast 1 negative 1 negative 6 divided by 2 negative 2 1 negative 2 negative 3 6 what do I notice my remainder is 0 if the remainder is 0 that implies that I have a factor of the polynomial and then when I go ahead and put this back in, in um, polynomial form I get the other factor right so dividing this polynomial by either of these will give me the other factor and also telling me they are factors based on the fact that the remainder is zero. Now, <clears throat> let me take this x squared minus x minus six. Let me take, um, let's just take x plus two, right? Remember that this is in a form that I'm allowed to use synthetic where c is negative two, correct? Now, I want to talk about what C is potentially allowed to be. In this example, C is called the zero of the polynomial function. Why? Because if I go and I set this polynomial function equal to zero, typically what you do with quadratics is you factor them out, right? X plus two, X minus three, and then you solve. You'll get negative two and you'll get three. These are values of X that create zero for the polynomial function. They're also x-intercepts, aren't they? Because anytime you're solving a, an equation like that, the y-coordinate is zero and you're solving for x-coordinates. That creates x-intercepts. Now, this is only going to work, right? I'm only going to get zeros if I have factors of the polynomial. Zeros kind of go hand in hand with factors. So if c is a zero, of a polynomial function, then x minus c is a factor, and vice versa, and vice versa. If x minus c is a factor of a function, then c is a zero of the function. So I can use factors, I can use zeros, and I can actually use that those concepts to continue to factor a polynomial function of higher degree. Now this is kind of what the factor theorem states. What the remainder theorem states, using this example, x squared minus x minus 6. Let's say this is a function f of x. I'm um, talking about the remainder theorem now. The remainder theorem states that. So let's say I want to um, determine 
if uh, negative 2 is a factor. Oh, sorry, negative 2 is a 0. Oops. Determine if negative 2 is a 0. Oops, can't spell. Or x plus 2 is a factor, right? Now you can go through the process, which I did here. You can go through the process of synthetic division to determine that because you're looking for the remainder to be zero, correct? But what the remainder theorem states is that if you take this value, and this is your C, if you take F of C, meaning you plug C into your function, you will get the remainder. if you divided the function by x minus c. So, okay, so what that means is knowing that x plus 2 is a factor, knowing that negative 2 is a 0, I'm expecting f of negative 2 to be equal to 0. So negative 2 squared minus negative 2 minus 6, I get 4 plus 2 minus 6 is 0. This matches the remainder when I divide my polynomial function by that factor. So it is a quick way of determining whether a factor is a factor or not. So, for example, I have 2x to the third minus 3x squared minus 11x plus 6 um, equal to 0. This is a polynomial equation. And I want to, and I can ask you a couple things. I can say factor it completely. So I'm going to list all the factors. I'm going to list them down here. Factors. Well, actually, let me list them on the next page so I have space just in case. I'm going to list all the factors of it and all the zeros and all the x-intercepts. Because I can ask you, here's a polynomial equation, right? or a polynomial function. Give me all the factors, give me all the zeros, give me all the x-intercepts, or the solutions. Remember, the zeros are the same as the solutions. <clears throat> so the idea is to be able to factor this down. Now, right now, you don't know how to do that because it's not, you can't factor by grouping. It's not a quadratic. It doesn't follow a quadratic pattern. So you need another method. And what you're gonna do is use the factor theorem, remainder theorem, and um, synthetic division to factor this down. Well, let me tell you that three is a zero. Of this. So I give you one zero. How many do I expect? Well, this is a third degree polynomial. I am expecting three zeros, three factors from this because it's a third degree polynomial. Well, let's list that. So now I know that three is one of my zeros, which means that three zero is an x-intercept because all the zeros are x-intercepts, which means that x minus three is a factor, right? This is a factor corresponding to this zero. So I know one factor, one zero, there's two more left. And that's cool because at the end of the day, I know that there's three. If I break it down by one, I can get it to a quadratic. I want you to notice that if I plug three into this function here, two times three to the third minus three times three squared minus 11 X, so I'm at 11 times three, <clears throat> plus 6, I'm going to get 0, which means I'm expecting the remainder to be 0 when I divide this by that factor, x minus 3. The remainder theorem says if I plug this in, whatever comes out should be my remainder. So being that the remainder is 0, that implies that 3 is a 0 or x minus 3 is a factor. So let me use synthetic to break this down. Two negative 3, negative 11, and 6. And I'm putting 3 here. Bring the 2 down. Multiply. Add. Multiply. Add. Mo uh, multiply. So that's a negative 2. Multiply. Add. The remainder matches what it is when I plug it into the function. The remainder is 0. That's what I expected because I was told that 3 was a 0. So now this becomes... 2x squared plus 3x minus 2. So
So now my function in factored form is this times x minus 3. This is where I'm at. I determined x minus 3 was one of my factors. When I divided by that factor, I got my other factor. And I'm breaking this polynomial down into simpler types of polynomials. Now, when I get to a quadratic, that's awesome because we should know how to factor quadratics. Does this factor, let's see, I have a 2x and, a, and an x. And I'm going to put a 2 here and a 1. So I have a 4 and a 1 that works. Positive, negative, that's going to give me positive 4. Negative 1 gives me that 3. Practice, you want to be fast like that. Now I have all three factors. 2x minus 1 is my other factor. What's my other factor? x plus 2. Now I have all three factors, and I'm going to get all three zeros. Now let's do this one first. The zero corresponding to this will be obviously negative 2. And then how do I get the zero from this one? What do I get when I set this equal to zero? I bring the 1 over, divide by 2, I get 1 half. So now I have three zeros, three factors. I should have three x-intercepts because they're all real zeros. We'll talk about complex zeros later. And um, again, I can ask you a lot of questions here. I could say solve this. Solving this equation tells you to factor it down, get the zeros. I could say find all the zeros. I could say find all the factors. I could say find all the x-intercepts. There are a lot of questions that I can ask you that require you to go through the same process, okay? Because they all kind of go hand in hand. Um, here, 15x to the third plus 14x squared. I do believe I'm copying that down right. This is a function. I want to find all the zeros and all the factors. Okay, so here. One factor is going to be given. Here's my first factor. Negative uh, x plus 1. I don't know if I got a little in there. x plus 1 is your factor. Your first factor. How many factors do you expect? Three, because it's a third degree polynomial. If it was a fourth degree polynomial, I would expect four factors. Got one factor which means that I have my first 0, which is the opposite of this, negative 1, which means I have my first x-intercept because it's a real 0, negative 1, 0. And I expect how many more? Two more. Again, if I were to, so my factor is x plus 1, right? So let me see. My factor is x plus 1. So if I were to go f, so remember this is my c, c is the opposite of that. If I were to do f of negative 1, right, and plug it in, what am I expecting my solution to be? What am I expecting to get out of that? If this is a factor, I'm expecting to get 0 if I plug it into the polynomial function. When I divide, which is what I'm going to do now to get my other factor, Right? and it's already in standard form and already representing all of its terms, I'm expecting my remainder to be 0 because it is a factor. And because when I plug it into the function, that's what I get. This should match this, obviously, if I'm doing all my arithmetic correct. So let's do it. 15 times negative 1 is negative 15. Add, um, multiply, negative 1 times negative 1, add, negative 2, multiply, and then I get 0, which is what I expected because it's a factor and because I got 0 when I plugged it in, plugged in C to my function. What's my other factor now? 15x to the second. This is 1 degree less than this. Minus 1x. And then my constant, minus 2. So f of x is currently in this form, 15x squared minus x minus 2 times x plus 1. This is where I am in almost completely factored form. Let me complete this factored form. This is a quadratic, so if it factors, then I can factor it by hand like this. So let's see, I'm going to do a 3x and a 5x. I did not give myself much space for that. 3x and Right? So I want a negative 1 in the middle. So 2, 2, yeah, 2 here, 1 here. So I get a 6 and a 5, minus and positive. So minus 6 plus 5 is a negative 1. Now I have my fully factored. This is my fully factored function. And now I could represent my other factors, 3x plus 1. And 5x minus 2. 
And now I can get my other zeros. When I set this equal to zero, I get negative one third. When I set this equal to zero, I add two and then divide by five, I get two fifths. And my other x-intercepts, because these zeros are real, I have three x-intercepts. And again, I can say, solve the, uh, solve the equation. These are the solutions. I can say, find the x-intercepts. Here they are. Factor it completely. Here are the factors. This is the function in factored form. Okay? But at the end of the day, what am I using? I'm using my factor theorem and my remainder theorem to kind of break this down. Now, I'm going to use it a lot in, chap uh, in this next chapter when I try, because the goal here is to, you know, factor higher order um, polynomial functions. Factor down fifth degree, sixth degrees, fourth degrees. Factor them all the way down to roughly sketch them. That's, the, that's where we're going here. So you're going to use the, the remainder theorem and the factor theorem like crazy to be able to do that.